Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Joel. I'm an analyst in Singapore. In this video, I will break down the step-by-step -step process of how we can automate the extraction of reports from SAP with Excel VBA. Some of you have been telling me that Power Automate that stop requires additional installation, which in most cases needs IT department's approval. It is also harder to share it with your colleagues as they do not have Power Automate Desktop installed. The steps used in this video do not require any additional software or installation in your machine. All you need is Excel and SAP installed in a Windows machine and you are all good to go. Before going into the fun part and looking at all the codes, let us head right into SAP and record a script as our base with SAP Script Recording and Playback tool. Similar to the previous video, click on the last icon of the taskbar and look for script recording and playback. Click on more and specify the directory that you would like to save the script. Once you are good with all the settings, click on the record button. Then you can start with your normal extraction routine. For this video, I will extract the customer list that are located in the US. I will access the T code Z customer, then input US as the country parameter. Click on Execute. Once my US customer is ready, I will export it as a spreadsheet to a specific directory in my local drive. And that completes my routine of extracting customer reports. Click on Stop and let us navigate to the directory where we save our script. Right click on the file and click on Edit. This is the script that will be our reference when we are writing our code for automation later on. Now let us open up Excel. Before doing anything, make sure to save the workbook that you are working on as a macro enabled workbook. Otherwise, your codes will not be saved in the workbook. Next, check if you have the developer tab in your ribbon. If it is not available, click on Files, Options, then Customize Ribbon. Make sure the Developer checkbox is ticked over here. Once you can see the Developer tab, navigate over and click on Visual Basic. Once you are in the editor, right-click on the blank space and click on Insert, then Module. Before we start writing our codes, Look for Tools on the status bar and click on References. Here, look for the line SAP GUI Scripting API and tick to enable it. If you are not able to find the line, you can try using the Browse button, then try to look for the OCX file in the directory here. Once everything is ready, let us start writing some code. This template is what I'm using for all the SAP GUI processes that I'm going to automate. I will include this template code down in the description below if you would like to just copy them over. Put it simply, I'm declaring variables that I will use for my sub-procedure. Then I will create a sub-procedure with the name SAP Customer Report where I can place my lines of script. Within the sub-procedure, I'm pointing my object variables to the SAP session with all these lines of code to create a connection between my script and SAP. Once the connection is created, we can simply return to the script which SAP has recorded. Copy everything under the last and if line and paste it over right before the end subline. After running the script, I will have a message box informing me that the script has been completed. Let us try and run the code by clicking on the play button. As you can see, the script ran successfully, exporting the list of US customers. Now, here comes the fun part. Did you notice all the parameters that have been entered, including the country, the directory, and the file name? All this can be altered to be dynamic according to user selections. To demonstrate that, I will create a placeholder in the Excel workbook where I can input my selection for the country parameter and the folder path to be saved to. In the next example, I will be extracting the list of customers from the country DE or Germany and save the extracted list to the same folder as our previous example. Return to the VBA editor and declare two new variables within the sub-procedure. 
selected country, and folder path. Reference the selected country variable to the value of B1 in the worksheet. As for the folder path, point it to the value of B2. Change the text US to selected country variable and replace our file path in text with the variable folder path. Since we may be extracting customer lists from other countries, we want to change the file name to reflect the country. Substitute US with the variable selected country and as for the date, we can use Excel built-in date functions to determine the current year, month, and day. If you are not familiar with Excel VBA, we can string text together by adding an end sign between the text and variables that we would like to combine. There we have it, our first sub-procedure with dynamic variables to extract report from SAP. Let us try and test run it with our new parameter DE. It works, and there we have our Germany customer list. We would not want to go into VBA editor every time we need to run the script, right? It's quite troublesome to be honest. Now that we know the macro is working, it is time for us to improve its usability. We can simply add a button in the worksheet and reference it to the sub-procedure that we have just written. Let us try it once more, changing the country to CA click on the button to run it. All done. From now on, every time you need to extract the customer list for a country, just change the country field and on the click of a button, your report will be served. There are so much more that you can do with VBA and SAP scripting. Once you understand how everything works, you can even extract information from SAP into spreadsheets or input information from Excel into SAP. Feel free to play around with this and I'm sure it will improve your productivity in no time. If you enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up as it always reaffirms that the content that I'm creating is valuable. That's all I have. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.